Um, what I'm going to show you guys real quick is the baking process. I think I showed you already earlier on in the semester, but um, now you may have forgotten it, so I'll go through it again. So this is a, a project that was done by Michael Zhang, um, and it um, was done in this class for this assignment. So um, it's kind of, I think it's a cool little study of like what can be done with Grasshopper that makes it um, really useful, right? Like it really takes advantage of what this software does best, which is like, you know, custom cells that are of a similar nature, but they're all just kind of like slightly different. So um, anyway, I'm going to show you kind of a simplified version of this, not baking everything. I just want you to see the process. Um, but what you're going to notice in the definition is that everything is done in um, with uh, the mesh colors. So basically, like the geometry is all here, but you can't select it, right? Because it doesn't exist yet. Um, so all these definitions are terminated by the mesh colors. So one thing I want to point out with that is that um, when you bake the mesh colors out, it will come out as a mesh. That's important to know. It's a different kind of geometry than a NURBS surface. Do you know what a NURBS surface is? Non-uniform reticulated busier spline, I think is what it call, is what the uh, acronym stands for. But it's basically all of your simple developable surfaces that you have in Rhino. So if you want to be able to like split and cut sections and um, you know, make 2D without too much extra geometry going on, um, then you're going to want to use NURBS surfaces instead of meshes. Um, so instead of using mesh color, let me just kind of bake one real quick so you'll see. But the process to bake something is uh, right click on the node, go to bake, and then you're going to place it on um, a layer that you've set up. Um, I, can we, I don't think we can add a layer here. We might be able to, oh, uh, no. All right, let's uh, put it on steel. And if you want to change some settings here, you can change some settings, but I don't think you need to worry too much about it. This is all just like visibility stuff. Um, so putting it on steel, hit OK, and it bakes it. OK, so now this is the geometry that we can modify. It placed it properly on the glass layer. Should have anyway. Layers, or sorry, steel layer, right? So layer steel. Um, <clears throat> and if your layer has materials, it should auto automatically apply the material to that uh, item as well. So, um, but let me just kind of note here, it says three meshes added to the selection. So that means all these little surfaces here, if I explode this thing, Oh, I don't know if I can explode it because it's one mesh. Um, anyway, let's uh, let's go back and get the geometry that we actually want. Okay, so instead of this, uh, what I actually want is this pipe. So um, right click, go to bake, go to steel, hit OK. Okay, so now I get these. Okay, they look a little different. Um, that's because these are developable surfaces. If I want to cut a section, it won't give me all those extra little lines and stuff. So, and I don't know if these are even able. Yeah, it's a single surface, so you wouldn't explode it. Um, what else? Okay. Um, so another thing you can do is um, not map. Um, I don't think it's a standard tool, so I'm not going to bother with it. All right. Um, so the other thing that you might want to do is start to group together things that are of a like nature. So if these are going to be steel, right, anything that's white is steel, um, you can do the same thing for all of those components all at once. Um, that. So it would do the outer edge and the inner edge. Um, but what you should do is just uh, basically like bring them all together. So you can do that most generically by using the merge tool. Okay, so merge is going to take any type of data, whether it's a surface or a poly surface or, um, I, well, surface or poly surface generally, you should be working in. Um, 
So let's go to uh, set tree and merge. And in merge, I'm going to pull pipe. And then I'm going to pull this pipe as well. So those are my um, two pipe families or systems. And then now if I uh, right click this and hit bake and I put it on steel, it selects all of that. So now all this, when I turn it off, it leaves just the elements that I wanted to bake. Okay. Um, so what questions do you have? What, the, <laughs> the definition? Yeah. It's actually pretty simple. Um, it's just a couple of points with like swirls and I think he created a list of numbers that kind of shoots it off of the center line. I think that's what this is. And then he fed that back in, moved it, and then created an interpolate curve to, and then piped it. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, any other questions? Okay, so now you have everything you need to be able to complete this assignment. Wait, did you say it's on next Thursday? No, Monday. Monday? Yep. Um, did I specify a resolution and like a size for your final render image? Eight and a half by 11 sheet? Yeah. Okay. But I didn't say like a DPI or anything like that? No. All right, go with uh, like 150 minimum. Um, and then uh, you probably should render it at 300. Okay, but if you're using like Maxwell, feel free to go down to 150 because that's ridiculous. Okay, any other questions? All right, let's do some desk crits.